Hey, Joel, I uh, created a Twitter account for uh, Eat the Casts. That is awesome. Um, I think we have almost 500 subscribers now on YouTube and 41 followers on Twitter. Yeah, just get started here. But I'm announcing all the, the videos that we produce as well as uh, retweeting some of the other videos in the, in the, in the, system, in the ecosystem. I hope you're putting our um, donation addresses up on there too so people remember that they can tip us. Well, maybe put it as a description. That would be a good point. So what are we doing right now? I think something about news, right? Let's let's see what happened uh, this this week in the in the world of uh, smart contracts and uh, blockchains and altcoins and anything. That is very exciting because I don't think there is any news broadcast that focuses on the Bitcoin 2.0 pro possibilities. Uh, Mint Chalk looks like you twin this thing. We we already produced a video about it. This guy in Palo Alto I bumped into said, "Look, I have this cool visual contract editor," and I said, "That's amazing." So this uh, is Mint Chalk by James Levy. Uh, right. Mintchalk.com. Yeah. Oh, he just updated his site with a cool three-dimensional screenshots of uh, Mint Chalk itself. This is uh, a serious guy. Very impressive. Great product, lets you calculate the gas, comes highly recommended by yours truly. Pretty good. Uh, it reminded me actually of uh, JS Fiddle, allowing you to create contracts and share them with each other and just have links referring to it. So great to yeah. insert into so blog posts. Like, yeah, it's a little bit like that gist. And, you know, with these kind of JavaScript bindings coming along, we can see it kind of evolving in a sense where it can actually be, you know, live coding, which is even cooler. So. Oh, cool! Oh, so it's running your it's running your contract, and then it's also showing you what the price was, what the storage right. was, and you can create your tests for it, and yeah, of course, I mean, share the the URL. Yeah. I mean, it's not doing it live today, but there's a chance it could be doing it live at some point in the future, which would just be incredible. Okay. So. Cool. Mint chalk. Um, what's next to us? So I think you went to some kind of a Dodge event. Yeah, the the doggy uh, coin. Remember we talked about that in one of our videos. Well, it now has its own conference, DogeCon. Is this it? Uh, no. Well, you know, I don't know about their website, but <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely existed because I was there. It had uh, more women than any other Bitcoin meetup I've gone to, which I think is about five or something like that. So it's definitely an improvement. Uh, but no, you know, they say that the Doge is kind of, you know, reaching out to the, the common man in and, and, and the way that Bitcoin is not, which I'm not sure if it's totally true, but it's definitely like reaching a broader demographic and um, it's, uh, it has a cute dog. So come on. And anything Bitcoin 2.0 related there? You know, really, I we've been through the tipping stuff, which I think is the kind of culturally the thing, but really technologically, there's nothing... Um, very impressive. You know, maybe they will set up some kind of merge mining solution, but uh, right now, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing that us nerds, you know, would say is really cool about it. So it's just the community and the cute dog. Okay. But something to watch because they, um, you know, one of the big issues at the moment is that, you know, the block having rate, um, you know, is going into effect. And so they're going to ha have some very significant technological challenges um, coming up in the next couple of months. I thought another interesting uh, project announcement was uh, Etherscriptor. Um, yeah, Ether Etherscriptor. Wow. Yeah. So that's, an, look, it's all like all this stuff is happening in Silicon Valley. We need some. Ethereum people to come over here and and you know educate us better, but um, you know another another I think Stanford guy created a visual contract creator, which is just incredible. So, so uh, this is on uh, etherscriptor.com, and right. it's it's some kind of I guess some kind of Lego drag and drop interface where you can create your contract, you can drag components around, yeah. and have it more. I guess user friendly or allow your your local lawyer to create his own contracts without having to learn the the LLL or a serpent uh, syntax. Yeah, I think it basically assumes that lawyers cannot learn how to code. And so but if you put these like Lego blocks in front of them, then maybe they will make something that works. <laughs> maybe it removes some mental hurdles. I still use I think you still need to understand a lot of the concept of coding, and this is just a different visual syntax for it. But it's a, it's an interesting presentation, and what yeah. it actually does, it it compiles down to the the LLL code. So this is the code that you could be copy pasting into mm -hmm. your uh, Ethereum client to submit it. 
Yeah, well, you know, our wonderful President Obama said that um, programming was the new literacy, but then he said he can't really program himself. So, but we're working on it. You know? <laughs> Obama for president. Yes. <laughs> Obama for president. Well, uh, we'll see. So there was this other launch, Made Safe. Made Safe. Oh my goodness, this is like the biggest 2.0 story. Um, uh, David Irvine, I talked with him earlier this week about their launch. They did $6 million worth of Bitcoins in four hours while those of us here on the West Coast were asleep. I, so, I think there was also some, some drama with the, 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 the ways you could obtain it and, and, and oh, the, yeah. the master so, coin being involved and then it being rolled back and that sounded very confusing. It's very simple, actually, what happened. So they priced it differently in, in MasterCoin and Bitcoin with a discount for people buying in MasterCoin. Um, <laughs> and that made that all these people buy MasterCoin. But the actual made safe people didn't want to have a lot of MasterCoin. They didn't want to have more, than, you know, they wanted to have Bitcoin. So, <laughs> so why did they set a discount? I think it was sort of, you know, there's no like set way for... For example, like a 2.0 platform, you know, all these platforms, like they're not really companies. They don't really have any way of making any profit, you know, yeah. they want to like somehow cre create some kind of sustainability. But every single one of them is using basically the same model. Like we have our like Ripple is doing this, MasterCoin is doing this. So it's, hang on. So what is made safe in one sentence? Made safe is trying to like decentralize the entire web infrastructure. Um, they delicious. have like a gazillion different projects going on that are related to that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's like their idea. And they think if they get a lot of money, then they'll be able to do that faster. We'll see. But uh, it's just worth summarizing that, uh, you know, th it, there's a kind of economic issue here with, you know, people who are basically all taking their um, profits off of the rise of the in currency. So, for the other people working on MasterCoin to really make money, um, they don't actually make money directly. They make money by the MasterCoin pr price increasing. I see. I uh, see. Yeah. There may be like a dis misaligned incentives um, in some of these projects, mm. which can lead to you know negative long-term consequences. Uh, were there any interesting blog posts uh, about Ethereum? So there's yeah. the Ethereum blog, blog.ethereum.org. Yeah, this is like one of the most interesting things. Um, you know, generally speaking, I agree with everything that Vitalik says, and this is something where I'm not a hundred percent sure that I agree with Vitalik. I have uh, to admit, it was a very long blog post, and I didn't yet finish it, reading it myself. Uh, pretty so it's decentralized protocol monetization and forks. And, and it's probably not worth getting into all the details, but you know, there is this general issue that come up many times on Reddit and and Bitcoin Talk and all sorts of things about forking Ethereum and, um, you know, whether or not someone would fork that and different consequences and different possibilities for forking it. And Vitalik is basically saying, you know, there's a moral reason why you shouldn't fork it. And also, you know, we don't expect these forks to succeed. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure that I'm convinced of, of all of his arguments. I'm also not really sure that the moral argument in this particular case is, is all that strong. So there's a lot of interesting things about kind of Group dynamics, you know, small group dynamics, traditional kind of startup like logic, um, incentivization structures that aren't really covered in this essay. So, but it's interesting. You should definitely read it, George. I guess I'll do. So we yourself, I mean, we released uh, the Ethercast demonstration walkthrough that you did. We had the the talk by Christian Peel about uh, disruption theory and cryptocurrencies from the the Silicon Valley Ethereum meetup. I had a small how-to how to use the split contract and how to submit data as part of uh, triggering a contract in the, the LF0 client and some internal debugging we did with that. And I think we also, oh yeah, we had our, our famous make it rain contract that we presented to the, to the world. Um, and it looks like we'll keep trying to produce as much quality content as we can, so. Okay, well, that's it for this week. Thank you, Doris. Bye-bye.